In Vietnam, his job was to dispose of enemy personnel. To kill them. Period. Win by attrition. What do you want to do with the gasoline station? Blow the shit out of it. Blow the shit out of it? Blow the shit out of it. You sure pick one a hell of a guy to mess around with. John Rambo is a Vietnam vet. He's a Green Beret, Congressional Medal of Honor. Rambo did bring out a darker side of me. You better be careful about the engines of violence you create because they can turn on you. We're dealing with somebody who had a complete mental breakdown as a result of his experience in Vietnam. It wasn't my war, and I did what I had to do to win, but somebody wouldn't let us win. The metaphor of the long-term effects of the Vietnam War on America. It's all in the past now. For you! For me, civilian life is nothing! There was a time when he was very special. Special my ass. He was just another drifter that broke the law. Well, you did some pushing of your own, John. They drew first blood, not me. They drew first blood. We were uh, basically breaking a little bit of new ground. It was the first time, I think, that we had had this kind of like super soldier now declare war with high-tech weapons on his own country. We've seen, you know, renegades this and renegades that, you know, the anti-hero, but not to this degree and not with this kind of uh, lethal ability. I had students just back from Vietnam who had a whole lot of trouble accepting me as an authority figure. Uh, many of them were younger than I was. And what gives you the right to tell us what to do when we've been over there risking our life for our country? So uh, I used to hang around after class to talk to them to try to understand what was going on in their minds. They would tell me about how they had trouble sleeping, how they had nightmares, how if they heard backfires or loud noises, it wasn't uncommon for some of them to dive to the pavement. It was then I began to learn about certain uh, behavior patterns that we now call post-trauma stress. And I thought what I would do was write a novel which was about a version of the students whom I'd had. The book was published in 1972. Larry Terman took it to Columbia Pictures. Columbia immediately turned around and sold the property to Warner Brothers. Robert Shapiro, who had been my agent, was then vice president of Warner Brothers. And he came to me one day and he said, would you like to do, develop this script? So I read the script and I read the book and there was a whole pile of scripts. And the best scripts of all was the one that was written by Michael Kozel and uh, William Sackheim. Bob Shapiro said to me after I kind of struggled by working on it for three months, he said, we decided we're not going to make this film. I said, what? I said, but Bob, I've been working on it for three months. He said, yeah, but just too close to the Vietnam War and people in America just don't want to hear about the Vietnam War. Dale Ma's gone. All that orange stuff that spread it around. Cut him down to nothing. I had mixed feelings about the war in the beginning. I was very much behind the war. And then I, I felt that the uh, soldiers were getting kind of a raw deal because uh, around 70, he realized there was no chance for us to win this war. It became a different kind of war, a war of attrition. And the soldiers had no choice. I had a real problem with calling them baby killers and spitting on returning GIs. I thought it was horrible. I know they've been terribly slighted. And then these gentlemen, Mario Kossar and Andrew Banya, heard about it and you know, decided to see if they could have a chance at it. Well, First Blood was, you know, everybody thinks of us as the beginning of Carolco, although Carolco was around for some eight years prior to that, surviving on, on handling foreign sales for various producers. They were living in a very, very modest way, and we became very friendly with one another. And one day, they said to me, do you, is there any, I'd like, we'd like you to make a film for us. Do you have anything you want to make? And I said, yeah, you know, I developed, I worked on a script at Warner Brothers, which is a great property it's called First Blood. And at that time, it was the most optioned script in Hollywood. 26 scripts, I believe. Uh, went through three, four, five studios. It was kind of a very strange intuition. We thought immediately about Stallone. So I remember we sent it to him on a Monday, and on Tuesday afternoon, Sylvester Stallone answered that he was going to do it. And I had this, in the whole history of my filmmaking, 40 years of directing films, the first time that I, A, I got my first choice, B, that I got it within 24 hours. We proposed it to him and he was interested. And at one stage, Sly kind of changed his mind. It was kind of a, 
a jinxed project. It had been around uh, to many actors and had gone through many changes with directors and I was very nervous. As a matter of fact, I, the day of filming I was hoping that it would never happen, that we would just go away. And it didn't. And then I looked at Andy and I said, he maybe not, doesn't want to act it anymore, but he's got the character so much, he's been so much involved. Maybe we can ask him to just finish, you know, writing it. And then, of course, what happened is once he started writing it, it came back to him and he said, well, that's me. Why am I not acting in it? I said, well, there's got to be a reason that everyone else has passed <laughs> except me. And so I, I didn't go into it saying, oh, yeah, this is going to be a winner. And, of course, everybody in town thought, here are the two foreigners. What are they doing? In fact, we asked ourselves what we were doing. Both Warren and I, as two young kids on the blog, they said, they're never going to deliver a movie with Stallone. I mean, you're out of your mind. So nobody bought it. First Blood was very strangely financed, actually. I had my, my godfather, who was a banker in France, and I said, uh, will you do me a favor? He said, what? I said, I believe a lot in this book that I want to make a, into a movie, and I need a loan. He said, OK. He said, how much is the loan? And I don't know how actually I pronounced it, but it came out. I said, 18 million. And he said, what well, can you, because in those days that was the word, can you pre-sell, can you cover, Are you, will you be okay? I said, oh sure, no problem. Because in my mind, I was going for it. The problem was, in the novel, I had a very angry character, and he practically destroys that town. He's relentless when he finally gets angry. We didn't want to make this guy a crazy murderer, which is what the script, script felt like. Look, John, we can't have you running around out there wasting friendly civilians. There are no friendly civilians. I think in the original Kozel Sackheim script, he, like, he killed 18 people. It was like target practice for him. We wanted to make him more like a guy who was really lost and he didn't know what to do with his life and, and he was a victim of circumstances. 